Welcome to jQuery Mobile video tutorials. This is the second video in this series and uh, I'm thinking of renaming this to jQuery Mobile School Tutorials and all of this uh, code, slides and videos will be available on github.com. The link is available at the bottom of this uh, slide deck. You could just google jQuery Mobile School and you will be redirected to this uh, github page. So let's get started. In this second video, which is about 5-10 minutes, we'll be going over how to create and add UI elements. Specifically, we'll be learning about four new things. How to add buttons, how to add list view, how to add a search box, and how do you navigate between pages in your jQuery mobile app. So I'm thinking of taking an example. So our final output after learning this uh, UI elements video should look something like this. It should have a search box, it should have a list of items, and it should have a header, footer, and you should be able to navigate between this screen and the second screen. So it looks something like this in action. So you could, you know, it, should, it has a search box that you can search. You could uh, tap into an item and then it'll navigate to that page and back and then you can tap into the second page and it should reverse transition back to the first page you should be able to you know search on the client side using a search box and um, so that's how it looks so that's what our final UI should look like after learning this uh, video tutorial after going through this video tutorial so and it should also work on Chrome like in this example so let's get a little deep into the code. So the first screen that we saw, this screen, for creating this screen, there are a bunch of new things. There's a search box and there's a list of items, right? The way you do that is by adding this um, data role list view. So I'm assuming that you've gone through the first video tutorial where I've covered data role page, header, content, and footer. So I'm not going to cover it here. You can always go back to the first one and, and then come back to this one. So I'm going to go forward with the new data role attributes. So for creating that list item, you use this data role list view. Data role list view basically, when you specify data role list view, jQuery Mobile transforms um, your unordered list into a mobile friendly list view. Basically, when you specify UI, UL, LI elements, it's going to take them and then, you know, convert them into this uh, uh, with special CSS and JS behavior. Like when you tap into an element, it's going to uh, fire off a click event. It's going to dynamically load this page using Ajax and, you know, change the DOM, um, parse the DOM, and then populate the DOM with this item, etc. So it does a bait, you know, it also fires off a transition event. So jQuery Mobile does a lot when you specify data role list view so that's the that's what data role list view does and then there's this data insent true data insent true attribute basically gives you this special round corners that you see here so if you remove it you will not see those round corners and you don't you'll also not see the margin so it basically makes your ui look more prettier in, in you know round corners so that's the data insent true Data filter true basically gives you this search box that allows you to search through on the client side um, like a search box. It you know it, it 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 does a lot of things like it adds this default text, it gives you some icon, it gives you this text box. So that's what data filter true does. And you can always configure this default text as well. We've gotten the details in the few in the the next sessions as to how you can configure all of this but basically data filter equals true gives you all of that search box and then you can have a list of items and then you specify data transition that's another new attribute that tells you how when you click on this it should transition from left to right should it come from right to left it should come as a pop-up and things like that so in this example I've just taken a slide so I've said data transition in a slide mode so 
there's a quite a lot of new data attributes that we've learned here. We've learned about data role list view, we've learned about data incent, true, data filter, true, data transition equals slide. So that gives you all of this behavior of you know rounded corners, then there's this transition from one page to the second page, uh, and gives you this search box that allows you to dynamically change, you know, the search selection, etc. So that's the main page code. Now let's go to the second page code, which is the sub page. The sub page has few new things as well. So when you go to this page, it has you know the back button, it has an image, it has a header and footer. So the way you add a back button is by adding data rel back on an anchor tag. When you do this, it basically mimics the back button behavior in a browser. So it's basically when you hit the back button here like this, or you hit the back button here because it's a web app, it would have a browser would have a back button. It's the same thing. So it basically mimics your uh, back button behavior. It basically goes through your history entry and ignores uh, the href anchor. But make sure you provide uh, a specific link even though it's ignoring the href here, for C-grade browsers that don't support history API, it will still work if you provide the right link in the back button. So that is what data rel back does. Data direction reverse basically specifies that you had a slide transition when you moved from the main page to the back page. When I hit the back button, it should do the reverse of that slide, which is go from right to left rather than left to right. So that is what data direction reverse does. And it's basic, and then you specify which is the main page you want to go to. And then you add uh, in your content section, you add an image and link it to your normal image that's there. So that's that's pretty much it. Like we add, add the main page and then the sub page. So we we learned about six new data attributes. We learned about the list view, how do you create a list view, how do you give them a pretty good border and a margin, curved corners using data inset, how do you add a client-side search capability using data filter, how do you transition from a page to the second page using data transition attribute, how do you add a back button, and how do you do a reverse transition from a sub-page to the main page. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Recap, we learned six new data attributes. We learned four in the first video. We added six more to our belt. So we know 10 new data attributes. Yay. And uh, we learned about adding buttons, list views, searching, and navigation. So in the next video, we're going to go over dialogues, pop-ups, page transition, and themes. That will basically allow you to customize your app and pages in, uh, in a theme-specific manner. And uh, again, all of this is available on github.com uh, on the URL, which is at the bottom of this slideshow. And um, happy learning jQuery Mobile. I will be posting the next video in a week. Thanks. Bye.